and it is a project looking at climate influence, nutrient flows, and threats to the biodiversity of the Belize Barrier Reef Reserve System. And our primary area of interest is the Belize River, the Belize River watershed. And we, we know that Belize River watershed is really um, it is important for agriculture, for homes, um, for our drinking water. And we have about 30% well, of the population of Belize that, uh, that utilizes needs and that um, directly utilizes that river because they're in the Belize watershed. Um, it is a, a collaborative initiative um, between Wildlife Conservation Society and the University of Alabama in Huntsville. The University of Georgia and where Christine um, joins us from in California from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory um, and the Coastal Zone Management Authority and Institute is our primary local partner and we're really trying to work together to use NASA satellite imagery to make predictive models of water quality um, and the impacts to the Belize Barrier Reef system um, and we do um, in-water surveys to help calibrate that. Um, so we, we, we'll speak a little bit more on these details. So it is a, a, um, it's a, it's, it's a research project in a sense, um, and we're hoping to provide information. Um, that we're, we have been and will continue to provide information to the government to be able to use to make decisions. Um, especially as it relates to the Sustainable Development Goal um, 14 to have um, sustainable use of marine resources, right? And of course, 15, Sustainable Development Goal 15 is looking at um, how we maintain and manage land because what happens on land influences the impact on the reef. Um, and of course, uh, Belize relies on, on the reef for our tourism and fisheries and general uh, livelihoods across the country. You know, we're, we're a coastal, coastal nation. So that's a general background. All right, Ms. Nicole, could you talk a little bit further back in terms of how the project came about? Was there a certain need? Um, was there a certain goal that the country needed to meet? And so who initiated and initiated it and how did it actually come together? Yeah, so th this is a, a project that was in initiated with WCS and actually uh, um, a Dr. Emil Sherrington, a Belizean who is now working at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. And he um, has a long history of work in Belize. He, he used to work at the Coastal Zone Management Authority and Institute and actually so did I many many years ago um, and what prompted the conversation was really our work looking at the impact on the reef. Um, we have been studying for a long time how fisheries or how, um, how, how fish have been decreasing in number or, or um, size um, but there are other factors that are impacting the reef that very little work has been put into and that's really looking at the bottom up or what's happening with pollution. How does water quality impact the reef? How can we better understand how activities that we're not thinking about, we're always talking about fishers and, and, and how um, fishing practices may be changing dynamics, but really there are a whole other set of influences that the fishers really are not a part of. It's the general populace. This, we're talking about sewerage systems. We're talking about agriculture because what happens within watersheds is the impact of, of runoff and sedimentation travels down these, the rivers and, and in our case we were looking specifically at the Belize River although we did have the opportunity to start looking at what's happening in, um, in um, New River. Um, we, we wanted to see more these combined impacts from the top and from the bottom and we needed some support with that aspect so we, we have a lot of work going on by many organizations in Belize um, and we have longitudinal studies of, of fishing impacts and fishing implications um, within and outside protected areas and so on but really no one is really taking a close look at pollution and that's what this study was trying to get at. Dr. Kristen Lee, could you talk to us in terms of the role that NASA um, plays in this entire project? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll just um, sort of build a bit on what Nicole was saying, which is looking at this sort of 
um, perspective from land to sea. So how are, what are people doing on land and how is, how are those land use practices um, impacting the coastal regions? And I think one really critical way that NASA can provide some insight into this is through leveraging space-borne remote sensing, utilizing satellite data, utilizing the perspective of space to study what's going on on the land, um, and then using modeling techniques to link land use practices and land use change with uh, coastal water quality. So we're utilizing satellite data not only to study what's going on on, uh, on the landscape and within the watersheds, but we're also able to use NASA and European Space Agency satellite data to look at the quality of water itself, primarily through the detection of changes in water color. So for example, if you get if you have an event where there's a lot of sediment that's being deposited along the coastal zone, that causes a change in the water color that can be detected using satellites. Um, and so from the perspective of space, we can help link what's going on within the watershed with what's going on in the coastal regions as well. Some people might ask, okay, it seems like such a huge undertaking. I mean, you have NASA involved here and we have Billy is just a small developing country. What what basically urged us for NASA to become a part of this and to engage in terms of the, the monitoring of, of the water and the landscape? Well, first of all, we do not consider Belize a small developing country. We absolutely value the opportunity to be able to work with WCS and the Coastal Zone Management Authority. Um, and you know, NASA Earth Science um, is really interested in understanding what's going on on the Earth and understanding Earth as a system. And in order to do this, we need to be able to understand how the land and the sea are connected, um, better understand things that are going on in the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef. And without critical partnerships like the ones that we have with WCS and, and Coastal Zone, that we wouldn't have access to the regional expertise and knowledge of what's going on in the systems and being able to understand and link that to what is being seen from the satellite perspective. Um, I should also mention that there's a program within NASA Earth Sciences called Applied Sciences. And Applied Sciences is focused and committed to linking research findings with um, more practical uses of the data. So how do we translate science and research to action? And that is the program under which this particular um, effort and this particular collaborative um, initiative is, is supported. Our project, unfortunately, doesn't have the funding. Uh, it doesn't include the mitigation measures, but these are things where we would be discussing. We've held a workshop um, with, with several organizations, government and non-government organizations, to share data and train, um, train on the use of the imagery. But I, I just wanted to show that um, not just satellite imagery has been used, but we've done this one um, side project as well. And the implication is increased coral stress, um, blooms of macroalgae, increased coral stress, and then that decreases the viability of the reef, you know, um, and of course that, that, that could impact fisheries as well so it's it's not just about how we tackle things from the resource extractors but it really has a lot of implication for industry on land so i'll let christine speak on some of the implications for the satellite research and i think that's one of the really unique aspects of this partnership is that we're not just using um, you know, in situ data to understand what's going on. We're using both in situ data as well as satellite based information, as well as modeling to link the land to sea. Um, and I think that's critical because together we can actually develop a greater understanding of what's going on. For example, satellite data is never going to be able to detect how much nutrients are in the water because nutrients such as nitrogen are not something that impact the color of the water. So we can try and guess how much nitrogen is in the water, but in order to verify that, we need to still have that on the ground sampling um, to, to sort of verify what's going on and to definitively show, as in the case of, of this study, 
how you link, for example, influences or impacts from wastewater on um, increases in microalgae and impacts on the reefs. Um, so we did look at um, the changes in water clarity utilizing satellite data. Um, and the during the initial shutdown um, as a result of, of COVID, there was a um, there was an opportunity to understand the impacts of marine traffic on water clarity. Um, and so the study that was led by this team, including students and faculty from UCLA, utilized um, an extensive record from the MODIS satellites that I had mentioned previously to compare what happened with water clarity during the period where marine traffic was halted due to um, COVID shutdowns. Um, and we saw that water clarity greatly increased um, across the, the Belize coastal zones, particularly in areas that tip, that generally experience higher degrees of marine traffic. Um, and so, you know, this kind of study and this kind of methodology and, um, and definitely the methods by which we can look and examine water quality from space can give us a sense of how we might be able to apply this to examine other impacts. I understand that the findings are looking to now be transferred or handed over to CDMA, correct? And yeah. in that case, what, what then happens? What do they do with that data? So we want to ensure that all this data and most of this, um, the, the high-tech data, as I would say, um, we're, we're trying to work out how that would be stored nationally so that Belizeans can work with this data. And what we, uh, we've mentioned a couple of times, these workshops, so we, we held one in April of 2021 um, virtually, and we expect to have another one um, before the close of the project in November. And there are opportunities for training and, and there are opportunities that the team engages with Belizean organizations that would utilize this kind of data, whether it's to study one site or study things nationally. Um, so it's really about having the tools in Belize for Belize to use it for its needs. And you, you may know that the Integrated Coastal Zone Management Plan has to be updated every four years. Um, so that, that's what um, Dr. Lee is referring to where we're hoping that this data, where we're expecting this data and, and, and there is a collaboration with, with CZMAI to use this data to help inform the next iteration of the ICZM plan. And that plan is a national plan across coastal zone and it, it also includes recommendations for um, practices on land. What do we do on land to mitigate those impacts on the reef. So it, it's it's for management because at the end of the day, as, as Christine's been saying, it's not about just collecting data for collecting data's sake. It's to be able to make better decisions and investments in Belize, Belize's um, natural resources and of course, sustainable use thereof. One final question for me. Has the discussion begun as yet in terms of, because I know you said there's not a budget to necessarily implement um, plans of action to try and mitigate the effects, the negative effects on these uh, water bodies. So has the discussion begun with other organizations to see how this information, this research can be used to basically improve whatever systems we have or utility um, or policies we have in utilizing the water? It's an excellent question and actually we were looking to see if we could get projects that would but those are projects in the millions of dollars. <laughs> That's not uh, the size of project we have here. Um, and those would need national input. For us right now, this week, you know, La Ruta Maya, of course, for Belizeans is an exciting week. This is what our, our big um, look forward to events for the country. And, you know, it, it is wonderful to see so much interest continue after all these years in this event. And I, you know, one of the things well, we're talking on this platform for La Ruta Maya. Why are we talking during La Ruta Maya? It's a fun time. But I remember when it first started, you know, the, the, ideal, the ideals were around clean river. The ideals 
were around what is the importance of this watershed? What is the importance of our fresh water? It is important for you and me and everybody listening. And while, um, you know, the watershed itself encompasses about 30% of the population, everyone has, I mean, you buy a bottle of beer. <laughs> everybody drink <laughs> Belize River water, right? And this, you know, reminding people, especially the paddlers and the teams, keep your garbage contained. I know there was times where after the boats passed and you see the wave of garbage float down. Um, the litter is one thing, you know, you better not litter. I don't know when last we had that out, but the, the also thinking about what are the other things you're seeing on that river? What, what, where do you see the removal of vegetation? Where has um, trees that protect this river from getting a lot of sedimentation, where have they been removed? So it's in everybody's interest, the, the homeowner, the small farmer that uses water from the river. And this is where the interest for La Ruta Maya and, and us coming to talk during La Ruta Maya. It's a fun event, it's an exciting event, and it's a celebration of Belize's freshwater system. Um, and, and we want to honor that. We want to honor what, what this system gives to this country and, and not destroy what is, is important for this nation. So I just wanted to, you know, congratulate and, and root for the paddlers. I enjoy going out and tomorrow I'll be very early <laughs> going to see paddlers leave. Um, but but it, I'm so thankful that you you that we we're able to have this opportunity to chat a bit about this um, and, and some of the serious sides, but it, you know, it's a beautiful thing for Belize.